My name is Jeff and I live in Columbus, Ohio. In 2004, Ohio changed the way they charge drunk driving cases. The old charge used to be called OMVI for operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated. The new law changed to OVI or operating any vehicle while intoxicated. The Ohio law is written so broadly that it includes golf carts, lawnmowers, and farm tractors. Whereas the old law specified that the property you are riding on had to be used by the public, the new law removes this narrowing language so that you can be charged on purely private property, like a golf course, your backyard, or your farm. In December 2004, I was walking my bicycle across my front yard to put it up on the porch when I was stopped by police for not having a headlight on my bike, a law that I didn't even know existed. And while he was writing me up for that, he said, I smell the presence of alcohol. That's an OVI. I refused the breathalyzer and I was convicted. I spent four days in jail, $400 in fines, $1,500 for an attorney, had my driver's license suspended for six months, and now I have my first conviction, which will double the penalties of my next one. My response was to appeal. The appeal was based on a substantive due process claim under the 14th Amendment. I intended to show through statistical evidence that there was no body count from non-motor vehicles and therefore no rational basis for these changes in the law. When I looked at the evidence, not only was I proven right that there is no body count from non-motor vehicles, but the statistics on motor vehicles was so small that there's hardly any justification for the severity of our current laws. For example, a new campaign for Mothers Against Drunk Driving wants to put breathalyzers in cars to prevent them from starting. On their website, they claim that 13,000 people die each year from drunk driving. 13,000 people is really an incredibly small number in a country of 300 million people. The Centers for Disease Control estimate that 36,000 people die every year from the flu. The flu kills three times as many people as drunk driving. For the purpose of my appeal, I looked specifically at Ohio statistics. I used a document from the Ohio Department of Public Safety called Ohio Traffic Crash Facts. For 2005, under general statistics, you can see that Ohio had a total of 358,127 crashes, of which 4.6% were alcohol-related, or arguably the same percentage of people who ate a Krispy Kreme or were talking on their cell phone. If you look at table 6.05, you can see that alcohol-related injuries were only 8%. The only abnormally high statistic is alcohol-related fatalities at 36%. You can compare that to speeding. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration estimates that a third of all fatalities are the result of speeding. Drinking is just a risk factor and is essentially the same as speeding. Now, if you look closer at the alcohol-related fatalities, you will see the number for 2005 is 474. This is not just for Memorial Day weekend, but for the whole state of Ohio, which has 11.5 million people and 7 million licensed drivers for the period of a whole year. Looking closer still, you will find that not all of those people were determined to be at fault. Table 6.08 shows just those people determined to be at fault, and the number is 415. When you look at who gets killed in these accidents, 315 times the driver kills themselves. Out of the remaining 100 people, 70 were passengers in the car with the drunk driver. That leaves a total of 30 totally innocent victims of drunk driving. But to get an even better perspective on the issue of drunk driving, I think you not only need to look at the crash statistics, but you should look at non-crash statistics. I couldn't find any, so I made some up using myself as an example. I'm 50 years old. I got my license when I was 16. That means I've been a licensed driver for 34 years, and I've driven almost every day since. I decided that on average, I made approximately two trips a day for 34 years. That's a total of 24,820 trips. I've been in an accident five times during that period. None were alcohol related and no one was injured. The percentage of my trips that resulted in crashes is 0.020145%. Or you could say that better than 99.9% .9 of the time, I made it to my destination without incident. 
Ohio has 7 million licensed drivers. If 7 million drivers took two trips a day, that's 14 million trips a day. Since the data from the Bureau of Motor Vehicles is for a whole year, you could multiply 14 million by 365, or more than 5.1 trillion trips are taken in Ohio each year. The total crashes for 2005 was 358,127. Total fatalities, 1,326. Alcohol-related, 474. And not a single one was killed by a bicycle, golf cart, or a lawnmower. Give me a break. Using the excuse of preventing drunk driving, it is now permissible for police to use forced blood draws and mandatory breath and urine testing despite constitutional protections against self-incrimination. The government is now allowed to stop people at random checkpoints without reasonable suspicion and are deprived of the right to a jury trial. We now have bar sweeps and police staking out the homes of suspected drunk drivers. And as one example, Texas has 277 people in prison for sentences of 20 years or more, including 13 life sentences for just drinking and driving, but not causing death or injury. Every year, our state legislatures, goaded on by groups like MAD, continue to make tougher and tougher penalties for anything that has to do with alcohol. As I mentioned, speeding is an equivalent risk factor for highway safety, but the speeding laws have remained the same for years. It's time to call this what it is. This is prohibition. The drunk driving laws are not conceived rationally by looking at the data or considering the general good, but they are driven by hysteria and zealotry by the dark, malevolent forces of prohibition. Only this time, it's prohibition on the installment plan.